And you're now listening to Rock Chop Jayhawk with me, Jayhawk, a podcast brought to you by the Field of 68 Media Network. Make sure you rate five stars, review, and hit the subscribe button on iTunes or anywhere else you get your podcast from. Remember, it's free. It's all free. All right, our guest today is a national championship. And, and some of you guys might know him. If you've been at a KU game, for sure, when you see the pregame, uh, before the game starts, before tip-off, you'll see the, the hype video board. You will see, you'll see a guy pounding his chest, King Kong. Mm-hmm. Darnell Jackson, he averaged 11.6 rebounds a game his senior year, led the team in rebounds and shooting percentage. Welcome to the pod, my friend, D-Block, Darnell Jackson. How you doing, man? I'm good, brother. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Right, so, so, tell, so tell everybody on the, on the podcast, man, how you been doing, what you been doing, what's going on with, with D-Block now? Man, I, you know, I've been doing okay, just trying to keep the family safe. Yeah. Uh, right now, you know, I've been interning with uh, Chris Johnson at Just Hoops, working with a couple yeah. NBA guys, free agents, still waiting to get picked up, you know, and I'm still learning on that side, too, because I want to transition into coaching and development, you know, and I, I feel like I can bring something great to any organization. You know, I have a couple little projects that I'm working on just to talk about my story, you know, from growing up to now, yeah. you know, I, I feel like I can touch a lot of young kids out there that that basically walk the same shoes I walked and you know they have a you definitely have an option to change your life you know you have a choice yeah you know you have a choice to be a mentor you have a choice to uh to basically just make the right decisions in life man yeah you bet is that is that is that your little one in the back yeah he been yeah. back come here myself <laughs> come here myself hey so I mean you you said it best you know because I was gonna try to touch on this you know, hey, <laughs> what's what's Darnell wanting to do after basketball? Is he wanting to get into some type of business a- adventures or is he wanting to get into coaching? You talked about, you know, getting into coaching. You know, what do you think, you know, what do you think you have to offer as far as, you know, what you can bring from a coaching standpoint and helping kids out, young kids out? Especially these young kids. You know, no, it's like it's not a knock to the old coaches. You know, I'm young. I can relate, yeah. you know, I definitely can, I can relate on, on both sides of the tracks. You know, I can relate to a guy from a kid that's come from the suburbs or I can relate to, to a kid that comes from nothing. You know, I, and, and some of these kids, you know, the most important thing is about mental health. Yeah. And yeah. I hope, hopefully a lot of coaches understand that because you never know what that kid is thinking or what he's going through. And like me, when I was at Kansas, I kept everything inside. You know, I would always just smile. I'm like, oh, I'm okay. But mentally, I was breaking down. And, like, you knew that. Coach, like, you guys knew that. But I just wouldn't open up until I, if, until I cracked, you know. So, yeah. hopefully, they have, like, you know, programs or exercises, man, to keep these kids' minds healthy. Hey, man, you know what, D-Block, man, you, you said it, man. Because whenever we think of – whenever we think of D-Block, man, I just, I just know I got to start smiling when I hear D-Block's <laughs> name. You know, I I definitely got to start smiling, and you know, I think that's one of the one of the greatest things I loved about you as a teammate mm-hmm. is that for one, you was tough as nails, and you just talked about how you held stuff in, and obviously, I think you're gonna have a uh, you're gonna be able to help so many kids down the future in order to kind of help bring and get that out. But that just shows again how tough you were. You know, mm-hmm. as a player, man, we didn't know you were going. I mean, we knew you were going through some stuff, but you never showed it, man. You showed up every day, worked, you know, still put the team on your back with your toughness, man. And one of the things I always loved about you, Darnell, is that, you know me, like, I love to get after the other player on the defensive end, talk a little crap, maybe throw an elbow on every now and then. But I always knew if there was another player on the team that messed with me, I could always go run and get D-Block and be like, hey, (laughs) D-Block, he messing with me, man. And D-Block's like, who? Who? I'm going to get him next play. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Darnell. I got you, man. That's what I was there for, man. I love you guys. Talk about that toughness, man. Talk about, like, where that tough mindset came you know, did it start at a young age? Is it something that developed? Like, where did that tough mindset come from you? Man, it uh, honestly, it just developed at Kansas. It's, uh, you know, being around you, Mike Lee, Aaron, Wayne, and just seeing how, like, how tough you guys were and 
and you guys didn't break. I will never forget. I was in a huddle with Aaron, and it was during a timeout against Georgia Tech, and I ended up actually leaning on him, and he, like, pushed me off. And he was like, don't lean on me. Like, I'm not trying to get tired from you leaning on me. So that right there, I was like, oh, man, he's so focused and just, like, any little thing that can it can alter your game. So, like, that stuck with me for years. And, you know, that was my freshman year, man. So I was like, yo, I got to bring it. Like, I can't be out here pouting on the court if things is not going my way. That's funny you mentioned you mentioned A. Miles and that, man, because I got a story with him with, with – uh, when we used to have to do 33s with Coach Williams, man, our conditioning test. Yeah. It was just getting on my nerves, man. Like, actually, no, it was with Coach Self. We had our 30 yeah. – we had to do our 30 uh, suicides. Yeah. You know, we just did our first one, right? And Aaron, you yeah. know, we, you know, you in the mindset after you get that first one, you're like, all right, man, we got 29 more. Let's go, let's go. After the first one, Aaron, like, all right, fellas, let's go. We got 29 more. Let's go. <laughs> Aaron, I to him like, Aaron, why are you saying that? But you know, you talk about that that tough mindset, man, and you know, that's one of the things we just want to do is continue to pass that down. And we knew we could tell from the get go. Uh, we was maybe passing some toughness down the UD block, but you already mm. had so much stuff just coming in that we was probably pulling and learning from you as well, too, man. So, D block, let's talk about this. How do you feel? Because you were an NBA guy, you got drafted mm. second round. How do you feel the NBA game is different than overseas right now? It's soft. Mm. I'm just get. I'm gonna give you an honest opinion. The NBA is definitely soft right now, and I like. I understand that they're protecting their players. But across in Europe, I would say, well, not even Europe. The most physical league I ever played in was in the Philippines. Okay. You know, you're getting undercut and bowed in the face, and you're allowed, some refs will allow you to fight. And it was, I'm like, yo, like, this is crazy. And, but it, it's, it's very physical, man. Europe is physical too. But on the, in Europe, like everywhere else, it's about business. You know, they don't, I think Europe teams really don't give you a second chance if you hurt, like either either you're going to play through your injury or we're going to send you home. Yes. And if they send you home, they send you home with nothing. Yes. You know, and just like I've been dealing with that for the last, what, three and a half years, just trying to get my money from teams. And it's, it sucks because, you know, FIBA really doesn't hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's not going to stop me from reaching my goals that I want to reach in life. For sure. So, I, I mean – for one, D Block, you look good, man. Thank and you, you look brother. Like you're still in great shape. So, Thank are you, you still wanting to play right now, or I'm I'm, you... I'm in. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Are you, okay. So, are you still wanting to play right now, or you've officially said I want to hang it up and coach, or is it a 50-50 deal? Like, all right, man, if I get a good coach opportunity, I'm gonna take that. Or if I can still play, I'm gonna take that. What's D Block's mindset right now? With man, with my, my mindset is. My mindset is just stay prepared for anything. Yeah. So I'm prepared. Whatever comes, if a coaching job comes, I'm gone. It's not like, damn, my like, man, I do want to play. No, I'm gone. If a, so a team calls me like, you want to come play? I'm gone. Like that's that's just how it is. I'm I'm not in between. I'm just I'm prepared for any situation. And you know, when you talk about being prepared for for any situation, I'm going off script a little bit. This is talk just to me. the mindset of, of D block, man. It's talk you to know, me. just always being ready for the next opportunity. And we're gonna to touch back on this a little bit, but is that kind of the same mindset that you guys had in that 08 championship run? Man, hell yeah. <laughs> like I I man, I honestly I gotta give a huge shout out to to D man. That D D man was amazing for us if, if he wasn't honestly if I don't think if he wasn't with us especially the bigs I think that story would have been written differently yeah. it's just because you know D man he had a ring he knew what it take to get there yeah. and he definitely had the mindset man he was constantly talking to me but I used to just look at him like man be quiet like you know and he's just like trust me D like he's always say that trust me D like trust me next thing you know Whatever he said, it happened. You walk to the bench, you know, he's sitting back with his legs crossed and he's just laughing. He's like, I told you, I told you. Man, he he definitely helped me progress, man, in my in my career, bro. And I I just want to give him a huge, huge shout out, man. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you know, D-Man, you know, been great not only for for bigs like you, Sasha Khan, you know, obviously, you know, having having such a great asset. <laughs>
to, to be able to learn from. You know, I, you know that that was big, and you mentioned it, man. You know, he 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 had been there, done that, champion championship player. Not only was he a champion, he was a champion at the the NBA level as well, too. So to be able to get that knowledge from from Danny was it was was crucial, man. And you definitely gave uh, D man a, a great shout out. So let's kind of dive into this year's team a little bit. Um, okay. You know, they're been they're in a bit of a funk right now. Obviously. Uh, Losing their their first their this is their first three game losing streak since uh, 2012-2013 season. What do you think this team needs to do to get back on track? I would I would definitely say paying attention to detail. Yeah, yeah. Because that 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 plays a big role into going into the game. Like Coach Self can play that with us. Like it's not like. Like how how this young generation is, you know, they doing all the dancing and the handshake. Coach with us, Coach Self wasn't playing that man. It was like, your ass is gonna pay attention or you're not gonna play. <laughs> so I, I truly, I you know, paying attention to detail. You know, KYP, know your personnel. You yeah. know, mental mistakes. It's like, but you know, guys are young. Time changes. The game changes, and definitely, I feel like they can they can fix. They can definitely fix a little a little yeah. bit adjust they can adjust on the offensive end and the defensive end i understand sometimes coach self goes small ball in the offense that he runs i really don't like it but you know because all teams are going to do a switch yeah and yeah. it's hard for it's hard for david to get the ball and when he gets the ball he's getting trapped like it's just you know but it's it's the game you know it happens but yeah. now you just gotta now you just gotta go back into film all right That's so let's talk about that d block let's talk about that because hey Obviously, we got a big, a, a big time great, a KU who was a, a post player, big forward, and a guard. I'm a guard, so right, you know, right. Obviously, you you know, I look at the small ball. I'm like, shoot, I wish we would have been doing that when we were playing. <laughs> you look right. at it like from a standpoint, obviously, from playing with great bigs and even being coached by great bigs that you feel that the Jayhawks definitely need strong. But do you feel – actually, I'm asking the question for me. Do you feel the Jayhawks need to have solid bigs down below in order to make a deep run into the NCAA tournament? Definitely. Like, look what we did. Yeah. Like, we were so loaded. Me, Darrell, Sasha. And I always think about this. Just imagine if Julian would have stayed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we would have had two rings. Yeah. That's my mindset. So I like, yeah, man, just having that that high low presence. Yeah. That you 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 know, you got two bigs on the court at all times, you know, because that changes the game. Yeah. Now you just having one big and you, you playing one in, four out. That's yeah. how, you know, these young kids are more athletic, more faster, they jump higher. You know, if I was a coach, I would just like I said, I'll just switch everything. Yeah. If David catches in the post, trap him. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, and, and I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you, D Block. If I, if if you're a smart guard, if you're a dumb guard, yeah, you just want to just be able to, you know, play small ball, shoot threes, not not get the bigs involved, not relying on having an inside presence. But I feel like if you're a smart guard, you want to have an inside presence because if you have a post that can score on the block, get you buckets, that's gonna have. Once you throw it in there, that's gonna make that defense collapse. Mm -hmm. Which is gonna allow those guards to get wide open looks right. when they kick out. So um, it opens I, the game. I, it opens the floor. Yeah, it definitely. Op it yeah. definitely opens the floor for other guys, you know, to be successful. But like, we have great shooters. We have great shooters, man, and 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 you see it. Like, some games are on, some games are off. You know, like I said, it's part of the game. But like you said, just having that presence. Yeah. And in, in the paint man it, it changes the whole floor of the game yeah and you know and kind of talking back to to david and mitch you know they both work they both work so hard you know you can't you can't take that away from either one of them right you know, david, right you know, struggled a little bit finishing around the rim lately and mitch you know hasn't got the the minutes that he probably needed to make a big impact so how do you actually so how can their games improve to help ku reached it, probably their ultimate goals, you know, down the line. Stay in the gym. Yeah. Stay in the gym, put in that extra work. Like, I think I think about that a lot. Yeah. Like, especially like the the stuff that they have now, the facilities, and the, they can go to the gym anytime they want. 
Like, like it what if out I took, and do that D block? You, you know what I'm saying? They like, what if I would have took advantage of that? Like you, like I hope they understand. Like, man, they're in a great, they're in the greatest situation in the world at being at Kansas and being part of that history, that tradition. Like, yeah. take advantage of it, man. Don't go back to your room and you got a gym right there. You could just walk out your apartment and walk inside the gym and get up a thousand shots. Yeah. You know, like me, just being with these guys that I'm that I'm working with now, like I'm seeing these guys put up thousands of shots. I'm like, damn, I wasn't doing that in my career. These guys are literally shooting a skin off their fingers. So if you have the opportunity to work, go work, get yeah. better, watch film, you know, study your opponent. You know, don't just like look at it like, oh, we're going to go beat this team because we're Kansas. We have the biggest target on our back in the Big 12. Everybody wants to beat Kansas. Yeah. You can't take advantage of that, you know? Yeah. Hey, Biggs, David, <laughs> Mitch, Trisha, if you listen yeah. to this, man, you're getting some good stuff right now from somebody who's been there, done it. National championship, national championships don't come, come, come too easy. And Darnell definitely, uh, you know, D Block, even watching you grow from your freshman year to your senior year, man, you know, you talk about staying in the gym, improving. That's what you did. You know, you mm-hmm. wasn't you weren't the player you were your freshman year that you were your senior year, but you continue to develop each and every year staying in the gym. And I think, you know, if those, if the KU biz can, you know, just take a little bit of that and get in the gym, work a little bit more, get there early, stay there late. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's gonna it's gonna show off, and you know, it's gonna pay off in the in the, in the long run for sure. Definitely. So, hey, people, like, I got a, a quick cash question for you. Talk to me. So fans love to talk. I've heard some fans they love to talk about the players only meeting you guys had at Henry T's the, that oh. that year of the championship. Do you think that's something that might help this team this year? And if so. Who do you think the player on that team is to kind of organize that? Well, I'm going to say the first is Garrett. Yeah. He has to. You know, he's the leader of that team. You know, so if if something is going on inside the locker room, she should be the one to get these guys together, sit them down, and they just put everything out on the table. That's, That's definitely, like, what's frustrating you as a player. Yeah. Talk about it. And that's basically what we did with Matt Kleiman and Jeremy Case starting off with the conversation, man. And and when when Jeremy spoke, everybody listened. Then when Matt spoke, everybody listened. Because, you know, Matt was a walk-on, but his voice mattered. Everybody's voice mattered, man. And that definitely changed our mindset of approaching our games every night. That's awesome, man. Uh, You know, I think that's definitely something that can – can help the Jayhawks. Hopefully the Jayhawks listening right now or, you know, and, and they take it upon themselves to have a coach, you know, players only meeting. And, you know, just like you said, it's, it's so much easier to talk things out as a, right. as a player, especially when you respect each other and, and, and get out there and make a change. So, right. hey, people, like there are so many times this season at Allen Fieldhouse that the crowd was not 16,300, man. And, you know, when you got 16,300, Sometimes they feel like they can help you, you know, cause an 8 0 run for us. Do you right. think that having 16, 300 in the stands is making a difference this year? Oh my God. Yeah, man. Just like when we were playing, yeah. you, you, you look up and you, you can yeah. see, you definitely can see the fog. You can yeah. see the fog at the top. Like people think it's like, it's, it's, like, it. it's, a, a, it's like a myth. No, it's real. Like you have 16 packed in that gym and you see the smoke and the fog at the top. That plays a huge role, man. It gives you so much energy to go out there like, yo, I got to go out here and show out tonight for the fans, like, because they give everything they have. Yeah. Why shouldn't we? Yeah. You know, we should do the same thing. We should return that favor because they're coming. When we lose, they're coming. When we win, they're coming. When we win a championship, they're celebrating with us. So those those young guys, man, they got to understand that. Like, it's not – don't take that – don't take that 16 for granted, man. Though, like, it's a very, very special moment. Yeah. So D block, I've been asking a lot of guys who've been on the podcast, you know, who they think KU this on this year's team, who's, who's the go-to, who do you think is the go-to guy down the stretch that can really help this team? You know, maybe if not turn the corner or even just stay on a consistent pattern. Oh man, that's tough. Cause I, I like, I like a lot of those guys. Yeah. 
Oh man. I really like Brown, bro. Yeah. Yeah. He like that kid, like when I'm like he like he he wears his heart on his on his yeah, on his does. shoulders, man. He brings it every night. He's physical. He doesn't mind getting dirty. Yeah. Like to me, honestly, I like I would throw him the ball yeah. to take the last shot. You know what? You know, and I've even it's 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 funny that you say that, man, because like one of my all you know, when I people always ask me, man, who's the best player you ever played against? They always wonder who's the best player. I'm like, hey, Kirk Heinrich, hands down. Hands down, Kirk Heinrich. Yeah. But when I think about Christian. Like, it's so much like you talked about some of those intangibles that he has. Just he's fearless. He's tough. Where's mm-hmm. his heart on his shoulder? Like, that's how Kirk was, man. And I think Christian is, to me, I think Christian can be that go-to guy. He's kind of been in a little bit slump. Had a right. rough game against uh, uh, OU last, last uh, yesterday. Only took five shots, didn't score. But I think he's the one that definitely – can really get this team going on a, on a, from an offensive standpoint just because he's so deadly. He can score off the dribble. He can score off the catch. Yes. He's proven he can finish at the rim. So I love to see. That's a that's a that's a great choice, man. I love to see Christian uh, go off, and he's definitely one of one of my favorites to watch just because how versatile he is. And kind of reminds me a little bit of Kirk too. Yes, sir. He's man. Oh. He, he's de- he's definitely going to bring it. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's part of the game. That's part of the game, you yeah. know. You make shots, you miss shots. But now, like I said, it comes down to your mental. It, it comes down how mental, mentally strong he is. Like, you know, next game where I'm going to get in the gym, I'm going to put up extra shots. Then when it's time to warm up, I'm going to make sure I get a good sweat and, and a good rhythm. Yeah. So when the game starts, I'm ready. And, like, you know, just from listening to you talk, D-Block, Sounds like, I mean, it's just the little things. You know, it's nothing major, nothing big. It's just the right. little things he needs, he needs to do. A little, just the details. You got to pay attention yeah. to the details. Yeah. So, D-Block, you started playing basketball in ninth grade, right? Mm-hmm. Late bloomer, huh? Late That's bloomer. Cool, man. As much as you Late bloomer. approved, I mean, not, uh, uh, not approved, but as much as you accomplished from only starting playing basketball at ninth grade. So right. that just goes to show what if D-Bot played and started playing in second grade. But that just shows how, how fast you can pick up on things, which is a great talent to have. When did you know that you could start playing at a big-time level? When you hit ninth grade, when were you like, man, I can take this to the next level and play? Uh, man, honestly, like, a lot of people don't know this. Like, my first recruitment letter was from Kansas, but it was for football. Mm. Okay. I was playing, you know, like I was playing football in high school too. Then honestly, I didn't know that basketball would have took me this far because if it wasn't for my mom forcing me to stop playing football, I probably would have never fell in love with the game. And when I fell in love with the game, I'll probably say my sophomore year in high school, I had like 56 points. And I was like, I can do this. You know, it was like, that was the only time I ever scored over 50. Never again. It was like 17. I didn't even know that. Yeah, but it was, it was a, it was a bad team. It was a, it was a very, very bad team. The guys barely could play, but just scoring that many points just gave me the ultimate confidence that nobody could stop me. Yeah. And and then just, you know, I, I was ultimately blessed just to continue my career. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So, you know, you're a, you're an Oklahoma guy, born and raised. Mm. Did you ever consider Oklahoma State or OU? Hmm. OU, yes. OSU, no. Okay. Kevin Sampson, Coach Sampson, man, called my mom, and they were having a conversation, right? And my mom was like, all I hear, well, he's not coming to OU, and hung up the phone. So I'm like, what's going on? He wanted to redshirt me. Okay. And my mom was like, you're not redshirting. Like, you're going to Illinois. This is where Coach Self got the Kansas job. Yeah. I was like, all right. You know, I'm like, whatever mom says goes. Then next thing you know, Coach Self comes to Midwest City. And he was like, man, I got something in the works. I might have an opportunity to go to a different university. 
And I'm like, okay. He was like, just hold off because it was out of Purdue and Illinois. So he's like, just hold off, hold off. I'm like, okay. Next thing I know, he, he calls me a week later and says, oh, I'm taking a Kansas job. He said, do you want to come to KU? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, hell yeah. But I'm like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I, like, I always dreamed about playing at KU is just because when Drew Gooden did this interview when they won the Big 12, and they passing him his T-shirt and the hat, and he's talking. And you know, when I used to go with Jeremy and Jr. on their recruiting business, I had the opportunity to meet him. Yeah. You know, like, and I, you know, I was like, I was kind of shook. I'm like, damn, I'm like that's that's Drew. He was sick that day, had the flu, and he played. Yeah. Played, man. He had like a double double, and and that that right there changed my whole mindset about Kansas basketball. I was like, man, I want to go. I want to go to Kansas because, because Drew Gooden did this. He played sick and he, man, like this, the, just the toughness you guys had, man. I yeah. loved it. I wanted to be a part of it. And Coach Self gave me that opportunity. Isn't it crazy though, man? Like, I know you, you know, you kind of, you know, talk, you know, we the, the J5 with Aaron, Mike, Wayne, Keith. Yeah. You know, you mentioned, you know, we appreciate it, man. You know, that, we kind of gave help give you guys toughness, you know. Mm. But it's funny, man, because when we came in as freshmen, we didn't know what the heck we was doing, man. We was some <laughs> wet noodles. But we looked at we looked at Drew, Kirk, I mean Brett Ballard, all those upper Lewis Harrison. Like we had a great senior class, and you know, we thought we was tough, man. We didn't figure yeah. out how tough it was until we actually saw what the work what we had to do, and then how Kirk and, and, and Nick and, and Drew and all those, Jeff Boshi, they took that and was just like, oh, that's that's nothing. So we we over here whining and crying. Now we're like, oh, I mean, we do this every day. So then we start figuring out how tough they are. So it just didn't come from us, man. Like, it's, it's crazy, man, with Kansas, man. That's why Kansas is so great. It just gets passed down generation after class, after class, after class, man, with that, that toughness and the mindset of, you know what it takes to be a Jayhawk, man. So that's that's cool, man. That you even say that, but you know, you know it, man. KU's a a a, a very different type of atmosphere in a place, man. Yes, sir. Definitely. Okay. So let's dive into that OA season a little bit, man. Okay. Coach mentioned, you know, I did coach. He, you know, he blessed he he blessed me with doing the the first podcast, man. So, but he mentioned that that OA team could just turn it off and turn it on quickly. Like, you guys could just be, you know, out there, man, other team going a quick 10-0 run. First half, y'all not worried. Then, yeah. boom, y'all turn it, y'all turn the light, y'all like, hey, y'all ready to go? Turn the light switch on. Next thing you know, you guys just do, have your way. Can you talk about, can you talk about that feeling and, you know, what it was with that OA team being able to just turn that switch? And not too many teams can do that, Darnell. Mm -hmm turn it on and off, like, just right. like that. Can you talk about how special that team was and what allowed you guys to do that? Like you just said, like, we're, we're a special group. And and there were times, like, we were, you know, playing around. And then just, like, we, we were just too deep, man, at every position. Yeah. Like, you know, you still have to worry about Sharon and Cole yeah. coming off the bench. And, you know, and when Rod, when Roderick had his time to, yeah. to showcase his talents, like it was like we wasn't a team where you had to worry about one or two players. You had to worry about everybody. Yeah. Everybody on that roster. So and having Mario, Brandon, Darrell, Russell, Sharon, when one of those guys would probably be like, okay, man, we bullshit, let's play. Yeah. That's uh, crazy. You know what I'm saying? And that's all it took is one one of those guys to say that. And next thing you know, man, we just, it's just, it's, it's over. Like, you can't keep up with us. That's amazing, man. You know, that team was, that team was full of pros too, man. And, you know, Coach Self is, to me, I feel like he was a master of, of managing the minutes for everyone. Do you think that team's unselfishness helped you guys be so successful? Because you talked about it. That's a deep team. Mm. And anybody could have played five to six more minutes, but you know, you have to manage those minutes. But do you think because you guys were so unselfish and allowing him to be able to go so deep that helped you guys 
be so successful? Yeah, definitely. Um, nobody really cared about who was getting the rewards or the the ultimate goal was to win and to win it all. Yeah. And that was our mindset, you know, and 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 if if we did complain about minutes, what you think Coach Seth gonna do? Oh, you're no. gonna sit on the bench this game. <laughs> I'm gonna put you in the last. I'm gonna put you in the last 50 seconds of the game, right? <laughs> so, like, um, like guys, we never complained about that because we we knew what was gonna happen. Like, okay, if, if Sasha's rolling, Sasha's gonna play. Yeah. If Darrell is rolling, Darrell is gonna play. Like, that's just how it was. Like, you know, then if a guy plays bad, like all coaches do, let me let me pull him out, let him calm down a little bit, let him watch the game, let him see what's going on, then throw him back in there. Then now you now you have your rhythm, you have your feel, like. You know, your whole – the whole game is slowed down. So, Coach Self definitely knew how to prepare us for that. Yeah. So, D-Block, what was – what was your favorite game in, in Allen Fieldhouse, man? Can you think about one of those favorite games that just stood out? I know it's oh, something. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I'll probably say Boston College. Okay. You know, it's just because so um, me and Mario, man, we had a moment, you know, in the tunnel because, you know, I was just thinking about, you know, my grandma, my mom and just everything that was going on with me. You know, it's just I just had one huge emotional melt uh, meltdown just because like we were we were on a roll, man. We were playing so good and like they wasn't there to see that. Yeah. You know, and that 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 was that was special special to me, man. And Mario, he grabbed me, and he just told me, he said, "Man, let's go out there and do it for them." He said, "I'm gonna help you." That right there, I was like, "Man, that dude will be my brother for life for that." And you know, man, that's I think again, man, that's again, you know, you you are such a a, a great inspiration when you just talk about. You know, Coach Self, you know, he always talks about, you know, you know, how can you take any a, a negative situation, turn it into a positive, you know, how can you, you know, walk your life and, you know, not settle for being good, being great. Man, that's that that's you, D Block, man. You've you've mm -hmm. done things the right way, man. You show toughness, man, and you know, and you know, you've just always been an inspiration to me, man, because you know, you can take no matter what life throws at you, man, you find a way to come up, come out on top, man. And I think that just goes to show, you know, your, your toughness, you're your willing to, to never give up, to always, you know, see a positive light, even when there may, may be a, you know, a negative dark darkness that's, that's in your way. You know, can you, mm. uh, can you just, you know, talk about, man, you know, that mindset of, you know, what, you know, what it takes to, to, to continue to keep pushing forward when things might not be, you know, going your way. And that, that just come from me having, like, I didn't have a lot of great mentors in my life and, and like, and I still have one. And, you know, with Don Davis, like when I got suspended for that and, and I remember sitting down with the NCAA and I told them, I was like, well, I knew Don before I even committed to Kansas, you know, He's at the gym, and I see him with a KU hat on, and I thought he was a recruit. And, <laughs> you know, we end up creating a relationship because it was just like he knew, like, the things that I was going through as a child, and, and he just wanted to be there for me. So until this day, like, we still talk, man. He just He's always calling me and just saying, man, you got to, like, keep being – the best person you can be, keep being the best husband you can be, keep being the best father you can be, you know, and just hearing that come from someone on the outside of my family, yeah. knowing the things that I'm going through mentally, like it meant a lot. So that like, I always, he's one of the reasons why I pounded my chest three times, mm. you know? I mean, hey, like, this, might be some, uh, this might be some information nobody really knew, man. Yeah, you know, but it, it, yeah, like a lot of people don't, they don't know, you know, they just assume. Yeah. And that's it. And, that, and that's what makes me mad and pisses me off because a lot of people might think they know, but they really don't know. Yeah. And so it's just like I said, like I just kept all that balled up and I just used that as my energy. Yeah. Then seeing my mom 
sitting in a wheelchair with her leg hanging off. And she hasn't seen my grandmother since the car wreck. Mm. So right there, right there, I told myself and I told, I whispered in her ear and I told her, I said, I'm gonna make it. Mm. That's impactful. In, yeah, I'm gonna make it. And that, that gave me the mindset, like, you know what? Nothing can stop me. I didn't been through it all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, 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 it helped you, me. Man. It's going to be so, you know, whether you play, you know, eventually, you know, my always advice is, man, play as long as you can, man. Because once once that body start breaking down, you're done. <laughs> but I yes, will be like, when you do decide to hang it up, um, hang up the shoes, hang up the jersey, man, you it, it's going to be so good to see you, in, you know, roll into the next part of your life as far as wanting to be a coach and, and being able to give back, man, like I'm sitting here doing an interview, man. And you, I mean, you touching me right now, man. I, I feel like right now that, you know, I got to sit back and after this, I got to go back and reevaluate my life to figure out, you know, what I can do in order to be a little bit more effective in life. So, I mean, I feel like if I'm feeling it right now, D block and I'm 37, right? 38, my bad. Damn. I always oh, try to oh. <laughs> hey, I'm 38, man. It just, gets me to to really think what you can really give i know you have so much to offer to uh, to the young kids whether it's yay high kids i mean you got your own family but it's going to be interesting to see your career develop and grow once you start getting on that coaching side man because you just have so much to offer man and these kids are going to be able to learn so much from whether they have negative backgrounds positive backgrounds you're going to be able to touch all kids from every angle, man. So I'm excited to see that, man. But keep hooping as long as you Thank can. You. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Thank hey, you. So, <laughs> hey, so you got to face guys like Steph Curry, Derrick Rose in the tournament that year. Who was the best player that you played against while you were at KU? Ooh. I got to I got to give I got to give it to uh to D Rose, man. Okay. Yeah. I got like just you saying his name because like if you go back and watch that game, that guy wasn't missing. Yeah. Man, explosive, hitting every yeah. shot, and I was like, you know, I'm just sitting here like, damn, like he gonna beat us by himself, you know? It was, yeah. it was just like he's a definitely a god given talent, man. Like he, his talent is just out of this world, man. You know, you see what he's doing in his career now. He's still playing, still healthy, even though he had his his injuries that, yeah. that didn't stop him from being great. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you talk about D Rose, man, just imagine what a D Rose with no injuries would be like right now. Oh my God. Oh, he hey. was definitely a scary player. So let's talk about, you know, after you guys, you know, let's talk about kind of D Rose, you know, kind of getting into that national championship game. You had eight points, eight rebounds in the, the national championship game. How many times have you watched that film? Do have you watched it after? Or are you like, man, I gotta watch that? Have you watched it with your with your little wing yet? Yeah, I watched it with my son. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, like every now and every now and then, like I'll watch it, and my lady always goes, "Why are you always watching that?" And I was like, "Cause it's just I'm like his memories. It still gives me chills. Like I love it." Yeah. So I, like I try to sit my son down and like, man, watch this. I'm like, who's that? And he's like, his dad. You know, mm-hmm. like just to show him. Like you know, like this is this is one of the greatest teams that that went through Kansas, and and I, hopefully God willing, like he'll he'll carry that on. Like I wouldn't mind him falling in love with the game of basketball and going to going to KU. Well, I'm sure I'm sure he's uh, he's gonna be able to follow it and and definitely dash footsteps because all you gotta do is give him a ball and give him that smile, man. I pro- I'm sure he's gonna be convinced right out the gate that D box smile, baby. Man. Hey, so so how did KU let's let's kind of move a little bit forward? Man, I like that's 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 something I didn't I didn't believe I was gonna go. Really? I didn't believe, yeah, I didn't believe I was gonna go. And one day we had a scout at practice in uh West Wilcox, I'll never forget from Cleveland. And Coach Self had us sit down and he was talking to us. And he, he had him speak, and he was like, tell the guys who, who you're in here watching. And he was like, Darnell Jackson. 
So it like, I got shocked because I'm like, you know, we got Sasha, Brandon, Darrell, Mario, Russ, you know, I'm like, I'm thinking he gonna say one of those guys' names. I'm like, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting him to say my name. So that right there definitely, definitely motivated me. Like, oh shit, I can make it. Let's go. Like, That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome right there, man. Hey, so can you talk about how much Coach Self and his staff elevated your game and instilled confidence in you? And man. how they helped you become the leader that you are today? Man, Coach Self, Coach T, Coach Chalmers, D-Man. Man, even like I didn't talk about Jankovic, Coach Dooley. Like yeah. Everybody, man, played a role in my career just because they I just like they experienced what I was going through and you know they never gave up on me they had the opportunity to you know they could have like man you got so much going on like we feel like it'd be better for you to transfer or you know just go back home but but they didn't you know they held on and they was like man we're going to help you do this and they and that's basically what they did like I had opportunities I had opportunities to quit and you know you know that story Coach Self and Coach Chalmers, man, they came right to Oklahoma yeah. and, and brought me back. But, you know, I, I'll talk a little bit more about that in my project. But yeah, yeah. if it wasn't, yeah. honestly, man, you got to have coaches like that are, that are willing, you know, to, to share that, you know, that, that emotion with you. Because if you don't have coaches like that that don't care, you know, it, it'll do damage to a young player. Yeah, it will. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Lots of damage. Hey, so – you know, you played years in the NBA. How do you think? How do you think what you learned there will translate to your life in bas? I mean, excuse me, to your life after basketball now. Like what you learned from your your days, your years in the NBA will translate to your life after basketball. Man, it's all like I talk about like just being prepared. They were always prepared, mm. being consistent. Like it's yeah. like it's like you, it's no days off with the NBA. You can't come in here and be like, oh, I'm not feeling it. No, you gotta bring it day in and day out, you know, and and me being around Ben Wallace and LeBron and Kurt Times and Stackhouse, like I was around a, a lot of great players and even Shaq and just sitting back and you watching these guys, like they didn't they didn't really take days off. They brought it every day. Like, yeah. man, I don't feel good. Oh, my foot hurt. They brought it, you know, no matter what. So, so hey, that you, it's definitely carrying over because you know we got kids and you know I might not be yeah. feeling good. I'm like, damn, I gotta get up. I gotta, I gotta prepare the lunch, or I gotta go, you know, take them to the park. Like I gotta be ready for anything. You know, uh, you you definitely you definitely get it right there, man. Like once you once you have kids, man, it's it's no more about you. You you uh, might want to be there, but. When you get pulled on the air, like, hey, I'm hungry. You're like, all right, man, I got to get up. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and even with that, like, just saying what you just said, like, that carries over into coaching. Mm -hmm. Because, that, like, as a young coach, like, you got to understand it's not about you anymore. It's about the player. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, you got to help that player's ego or try to humble him in certain situations. Tell him, what he, tell him what he needs to hear and not what he wants to hear. Yep, that is, you know, yep, that's how you make a player grow, man. Hey, D Block, I'm telling you, man, it's gonna be excited to see you hit that that coaching, that coaching. Yes, seat, you're gonna be Thank great, you. and you're gonna impact so many kids' lives, and um, it's it's gonna be fun to see you trans transition into that when the time is uh, is ready for is is ready for you. Hey, Thank so what was like? You mentioned Brian, man. What was it like playing for with LeBron or for <laughs> LeBron? Who let the whole world know it was a movie. <laughs> it was, man, if we'd have had cameras when I was there, yeah, man, we'd have been, we'd have been bigger than the Kardashians, man. It was like, it, that guy was so unbelievable, man. Like, I never, like, to this day, I still say it. Like, I never, ever seen anybody do the things that he does, like, just from training and taking care of his body. Like, his, his mind, like, the, the knowledge of the game is so crazy, man. It's just, it, it was just like, I was a fan. Like the whole time I was there, like I, I was just in awe with him because he knew what it, he knew what it, it, it took to be great, man. And, and that's what he's doing now. Like he's, he's the best player in the world right now. That's awesome, man. 
Well, D Block, let's hit some. Uh, I'm gonna hit you with some quick fire questions, man. Hey, so what do you okay. miss most about Lawrence? Uh, Granddad's barbecue. Oh, Granddad! Shout out, Granddad! Yes, sir. Granddad's hey, barbecue. It's my, I forgot who. Gee, I was talking to somebody about it, who was it? it. I don't know if it was Keith. It might have been Keith that said that. He might have said Granddad. But man, you know, because I coach Granddad's nephew, man, look, Jace. And, you know, one time after a game, man, granddad, granddad came with a plate, was like, hey, I got some ribs, mashed potatoes. <laughs> and I felt right. so good. I didn't even give my wife none. She probably going to kick my butt right now because she knew. I was just like, hey, yeah, no, no, this is nothing, man. This is nothing right here. Yeah, yeah. I had to eat all that to myself, man. You can't go wrong with granddad's, man. Man, granddad's all the way. Hey, so – I'm assuming maybe this would be the same answer. If you were in Lawrence for one day, where would you go eat? <laughs> granddad's. <laughs> right to granddad's, man. All right, so check this out. I've been asking a bunch of players, man. You know, some people have been rolling with their teams. Mostly everybody has rolled with their teams, D-Block. So okay. if the 2000 National 8 team played the 2012 Final Four team or the 2018 Final Four team, who would win and why? Man, we were win. We was tough as nails, man. They weren't, man. Hey, I got love for uh for the twins and, and T Rob, but they they wasn't messing with us, man. I no, no. They would they would have got thrown out the game because we'd have been so physical with them. <laughs> but no. What team oh, wait, baby. you though know, with the 2000 National Way team? Y'all was stacked, bro. Yeah. Y'all was stacked, man. That's all I can say. All right, so hey. Last one for you, D-Block. If you could have played with one player that played at KU after you, so after you graduated, you could play with one player, who would it be and why? After I left? Yep. Ooh. I got I to gotta say T-Rock. Ooh. Yeah, I got to say T-Rock. Because he, 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 he nasty duo right there with you two. He, yeah, he was just a dog, man, and he was hungry. Then, you know, just in, in the personal things that he went through, like we def we definitely would have yeah. made something special at KU for sure. Yeah, yeah well, I, I'm I'm definitely sure that, you know, obviously with you being before, you know, T Rob knowing what, what, what you've been through and you know how you cope through it, I'm I'm sure it helped him get through what he was going through as well, too. But D block, man, uh I want to thank you, man. That's it for today, Jayhawk Nation. Thanks so much for listening in to Rock Chalk Jayhawk with me, Jayhawk, a podcast brought to you by the Field of 68 Media Network. Make sure you rate five stars, review, and hit the subscribe button on iTunes or anywhere you get your podcast from. And remember, it's free. It's free to download. D-Block. Yes, sir. Thanks again. I appreciate you, man. Love you like a brother. You are my brother. Love Can't you wait too. to see you continue to grow, man. Let's do it. Thank you, brother. Hey, Have a good one. It, hey, we'll be in contact, man. I'm going to keep hitting you on those audio, those audio messages, man. <laughs> hey, if anybody don't know before we get off, D-Block put me on the audio messages. Normally, I'll be texting, but he hit me with the audio. So now it's way easier. Messages, <laughs> way right, easier. It's way easier. Way easier. You sitting there, you type, typing all them damn words like, man, Hey, listen to me. I'm with audio, like <laughs> voice message, man. It's, it's, it's the best thing going on right now. Hey, hey, you think about it, it's a little bit safer too if you're driving, you know, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, with well, D Block, appreciate you, man. Good luck, man. Hope you nail a job here coming up soon on the court. But if not, man, I know somebody's going to be looking to, uh, to get you on their coaching staff because of what you have to offer, man. D-Block, have a great Sunday. Love you, brother, and hit me up if you need me. Love you, too.